What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you've been following basketball closely, you know Kevin Durant is once again playing basketball, and this is a very important thing for the entire NBA, and it's a very special thing for all us NBA fans, as Kevin Durant has not played basketball in nearly 18 months, and when he got injured in 2019, he was playing his best basketball of his career. And so far, from what I've seen in the workouts, the preseason, and even the regular season games, I think Kevin Durant, he is already back to his old form. So KD being back and still being one of the best players in the NBA, that got me thinking, when was Kevin Durant the clear-cut best player in the world? Was it one year, two year, was it never? I really wanted to do an in-depth video and decide when was Kevin Durant the best player in the NBA. Now to start this video, let's go to Kevin Durant's 2008 season where he was a rookie for the Seattle Supersonics. And this is the last year the Sonics are around as a franchise. And this year Kevin Durant is the second pick in the NBA draft, averaged 20.3 points per game, 4.4 boards, 2.4 assists on 43-29, 87 splits. And he was named the rookie of the year for the 20 win Seattle Supersonics. Now, for rookie standards, that is definitely a great year, but at this point, KD, he was nowhere close to being the best player in the world. So, now we move on to his 2009 season, his second year in the NBA, where he averaged 25.3 points per game, 6.5 boards, 2.8 assists on 48-42 and 86 splits. And this year for KD was a pretty significant year, as he had a huge jump in production as well as efficiency, and he did that while being one of the best young players in the NBA, but despite that, he was not named an All-Star, and he did not make an All-NBA team. In this 09 year, this was the first year of the Oklahoma City franchise. Russell Westbrook, he was a rookie, and the Thunder won 23 games in their inaugural season. Now, moving forward to the 2010 season, this is the year I think Kevin Durant, he really became one of the top tier players in the NBA, as he averaged 30.1 points per game, that was the most in the NBA, 7.6 boards, 2.8 assists on 48-37, 90 splits. And if you look at his scoring production from year one to year two, all the way to year three, he was increasing by nearly five points per game every single year. And in three years, he was already one of the elite scorers in the NBA. And this year for KD was definitely special. As he was a first time All-Star, he made first team All-NBA, would have a 50 and 32 record, and make the playoffs for the first time in four years. Now, unfortunately, this Thunder team, they were in the loaded Western Conference, and they ran into the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round, the eventual NBA champions. Now, at this point in 2010, KD is clearly one of the best young players in the NBA, and I would say he was an A-tier player, after a quick ascension from year one to year two, all the way to year three. Now, in the 2011 season, Kevin Durant, he would once again show out, averaging 27.7 points per game, that was the most NBA, 6.8 boards, 2.7 assists, on 46-35, 88 splits, and he was once again top 5 in MVP voting. And this Thunder team, they would have a 55-27 and record, and they would make the Western Conference Finals, where once again, they would lose to the eventual champions, this time being the Dallas Mavericks. So, once again, a very impressive year from KD. And I think the Thunder team, they took a big step winning 55 games and making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. Now, moving on to the 2012 season, Kevin Durant this year would average 28.0 points per game, 8.0 boards, 3.5 assists on 49-39 and 86 splits. And this year, KD, he would once again finish second MVP voting. He would make first team All-NBA in the Thunder with a 47-19 record during a lockout season. And at this point in KD's career, he's already proven he's one of the top players in the NBA, so what really matters is how good he is in the playoffs. And during his playoff run, he would average 28.5 points per game, 7.4 boards, 3.7 assists, on 52-37, 86 splits, and this Thunder team, they would make it all the way to the NBA Finals. And in the NBA Finals, Kevin Durant, he was once again fantastic, averaging 30.6 points per game, 6.0 boards, 2.2 assists on 55, 39, 84 splits. And in this series, he really played LeBron pretty close and it was really dead even. I would say LeBron obviously has the edge winning the championship, 
but I think one of the big edges LeBron has is being way better in the clutch. As during the last 5 minutes of each of these games, the score within 5 points, LeBron James would average 3.5 points per game in the clutch on 57, 33, and 83 splits, compared to KD who would average 1.80 points per game on 25, 33, 100 splits. So it was a great fight from a young KD, but LeBron James, he was still the king of the NBA. Now moving on to the 2013 season, Kevin Durant was once again amazing stats wise, averaging 28.1 points a game, 7.9 boards, 4.6 assists on 51, 41, 90 splits. And this year, once again, Kevin Durant, he would finish second MVP voting to LeBron James, and he would make first team all NBA. And after that finals run in 2012, the Thunder's expectations were definitely high, but after an injury from Russell Westbrook in the first round, those expectations would come crashing down, and this Thunder team they would lose in the second round to the Memphis Grizzlies, but KD in this playoff run still averaged 30.8 points per game, 9.0 boards, 6.3 assists on 45-31, 83 splits. But as we all know, a second round exit does not equal being the best player in the world, especially when LeBron James repeats as the NBA champion. So in 2013, I think LeBron, he was the clear cut best player in the world. But in 2014, I think Kevin Durant, this is the first year you can really argue he was the best player in the NBA from the regular season all the way to the playoffs. And this year, KD was named MVP after averaging 32.0 points per game, a career high, and leading the NBA, 7.4 boards, 5.5 assists, on 50, 39, 87 splits. And what makes this MVP a very impressive MVP is that the Thunder won 59 games with Russell Westbrook missing 36 games. Now in the playoff, this Thunder team, in the first round, they would beat the 50 and 32 Grizzlies. In the second round, they would beat the 57 and 25 Clippers. And in the Western Conference Finals, they would fall the 16 22 Spurs in six games. And what I find pretty interesting is that this Thunder team took the Spurs to six games compared to the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals who only took them to five games and got blown out virtually every game. And when you look at the comparison of 2014 playoff KD versus 2014 playoff LeBron James, it's an extremely close comparison. I think depending on the argument, you could swing either way. And one of the important things I think to note is how both these players performed in the clutch. KD averaged 5.2 points a game on 50, 18, 78 splits. LeBron averaged 3.4 points a game on 55, 50, and 77 splits. So once again, a very close comparison as KD averages more points per game, but LeBron has the edge in efficiency. So for this year in 2014, I don't think there's a clear cut best player in the world. I would say at the worst, it's a split between LeBron James and Kevin Durant being a 1A, 1B type situation. And after that very impressive 2014 season, in 2015, the Thunder would have a huge letdown as Kevin Durant would have a Jones fracture in his left foot, and the Thunder, they would miss the playoffs after KD only played 27 games, and this was definitely a lost season for this Thunder team. Now with that huge disappointment in 2015, the Thunder would come roaring back in 2016 and have a great bounce back season, going 55 and 27 and making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, where Kevin Durant and his Thunder team would blow a 3-1 lead to Steph Curry's Golden State Warriors. And over the last four games of this series, Kevin Durant, for his standards, was absolutely awful, averaging 30.5 points a game, 3.5 boards, 8.0 boards on 38, 25, and 91 splits. And what makes it even worse is how KD performed in the clutch, only averaging 0.5 points a game on 11.1 field goal percentage and 0% from three. So that year in 2016, KD was definitely not even close to being the best player in the NBA after blowing a 3-1 lead to the Golden State Warriors. And after that 2016 season, we all know KD made the move from Oklahoma City over to the Bay Area, joining Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green, and forming one of the most dominant super teams the NBA has ever seen. And with KD on this Warriors team, they would have the best record of the NBA. And when it came to the playoffs, they would have a 16-1 record, tied for the best record in NBA history. 
and I think a lot of people for this 2017 year will say that KD is disqualified from being the best player in the world as he joined the Golden State Warriors who before him won 73 games. And I 100% push back on that as if you look at LeBron James after he joined the Heat in 2011, did him joining Chris Bosh and D. Wade not make him one of the best players in the world and arguably the best player in the world? No, obviously it did not. That move had no effect on where he ranked LeBron James among the best players in the world. And the same thing can be said for Kevin Durant in 2017. And I think the big thing that makes me call Kevin Durant the best player in the world for the 2017 season is how dominant Golden State was during the regular season as well as the NBA playoffs. And in the finals, Kevin Durant head-to-head -head versus LeBron James would average 35.2 points a game, 8.2 boards, 5.4 assists on ridiculous 55, 47, and 93 splits. Now LeBron in his own right, he was phenomenal during this series, putting up astonishing numbers on great efficiency. And I think off these standard stats, it is pretty even. But the one thing I would say that gives Kevin Durant the edge over LeBron James is how good he was defensively compared to LeBron, who was kind of aloof and not really focused on the defensive end. And I think one of the other things that gives KD the edge over LeBron James is the dagger three he hit in LeBron's mouth during game three of this series. And when it came to the finals, only one of these games was even close to qualify as clutch time, but in that game, KD would average 7.0 points per game on 100, 100, 100 splits, compared to LeBron, who averaged 2 points per game on 0, 0, 100 splits. And if you expand that scope to the entire playoffs, Kevin Durant averaged 4.7 points per game on 83, 67, 100 splits, compared to LeBron, who averaged 2.6 points per game on 26, 28, 54 splits. And in 2017, the thing that gives Kevin Durant the edge is how he performed in the clutch compared to LeBron James. Now, fast forward to the 2018 season, and once again, this Warriors team, they were great, winning 58 games. And Kevin Durant in the playoffs would average 29 points per game, 7.0 boards, 4.7 assists on 48, 34, and 96 splits. And that year, during any regular year, would be considered the best player in the world. But LeBron James, during the 2018 playoffs, he was just in another stratosphere and on another level, averaging 34 points per game, 9.1 assists, 9.0 boards on 54, 34, 75 splits. And during his playoff run, he would have eight 40 point games, including a 51 point game in the finals, and have two buzzer beater shots versus the Toronto Raptors and the Indiana Pacers. So during this year, Kevin Durant, he was obviously the NBA champion and the finals MVP, but I would still give the edge to LeBron James because he played absolutely out of his mind with a subpar supporting cast. Now in 2019, we wouldn't really have a LeBron James versus Kevin Durant debate as LeBron in his first year with the Lakers, he would miss the playoffs and that right there, that eliminates you from being called the best player in the world and KD during the playoffs pre-injury was playing like the clear-cut best player in the world, averaging 35.4 points a game, 5.2 boards, 5.0 assists on 50, 40, 90 splits. And up to that point, KD was the first player in NBA history to average 35, 5 and 5 on 50, 40, 90 splits, and he was having a historic, career-defining playoff run. But unfortunately for KD, his historic postseason run would come to an end after an injury versus the Houston Rockets. And I think for this 2019 year, Kawhi Leonard, who was definitely the best player in the world, as he himself had an historic playoff run, scoring over 700 points, having a Game 7 buzzer beater, and leading the Toronto Raptors to their first ever NBA championship. Now, skipping over the 2020 season, as Kevin Durant did not play a single minute, let's look at the 2021 season, as Kevin Durant is once again making his comeback. And like I said earlier in the video, Kevin Durant, through these first few games in the NBA, I would say he was 100% back to Kevin Durant form, but I think for him to claim that title as the best player in the world, he's going to have to do a couple of things. Have an MVP type year and lead the Nets to a deep playoff run and possibly an NBA championship. And if he does that, I'll be the first one to call him 
the best player in the world over LeBron James, over Steph Curry, and over Kawhi Leonard. And I think those expectations, they are pretty high for a player in his first year with a new franchise, but I think if anyone can do it, Kevin Durant is definitely that guy. So as always, it should be fun to watch KD perform this year as he's one of the most exciting talents in the NBA, being a seven foot sniper who can score from all three levels. And I am very intrigued by this Nets team as their offense looks extremely deadly. Now in the comments, let me know, when did you think Kevin Durant was the best player in the world? I laid out my argument in this video for KD throughout his entire career. So as always, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.